Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Purple Penny uh, weekly video, uh, all about coins and banknotes and the goings on in the world and whatever I feel like talking about. My name is Mark. I, I own and run the Purple Penny along with my wife, Catherine. Purple Penny is a bricks and mortar coin store in the northern suburbs of Adelaide. We've been here almost four years uh, in this shop and we've been doing these videos for almost three years, trying to do them weekly. Uh, depending on other commitments. So we've got a number of viewers in here already. Thank you everyone for joining in. Hi Peter, Patrick, Tanya, Gary, Paul, Pauline, Andrew, Michelle, Brandon, Adam, John, Cam, Nelson, Ronalyn, Sandy, Greg, Frank, Brett Zowie, how are you all going? Now I will just warn you that I did have uh, an inoculation yesterday and I'm feeling quite under the weather today so if I get a bit cranky about things I do apologise in advance for that. Right, uh, last week in the shop we were busy on Wednesday and we were busy on Saturday. Thursday and Friday were a little bit quieter. Uh, the two dollar coins that shall not be mentioned uh, have continued to cause a bit of a ruckus. We just had a phone call before, someone asking about them. Uh, the sales activity online for those coins, I believe, is still quite frenetic, but I believe that the prices have leveled off a bit, and that's all I'll talk about them today. Uh, we bought quite a bit of stuff this week, sold quite a bit of stuff. Gold and silver prices are still up. We sold a whole bunch of gold on Thursday, which is great to see the back end of that. Uh, we're out of silver one ounce rounds, and they've all sold out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, interesting things that we've bought, I did just grab something before that I wanted to share with you simply because I haven't seen this before. It's a, uh, a set of PNCs issued by the Hutt Company, not the Hutt River Company, but the Hutt Commemoratives Limited. So they're in a PVC folder there. And what they are is a 1972 Australian proof set in uh, PNC form. One cent through to 50 cent. And in these uh, nicely designed PNCs that are registered with Australia Post. So there's one for every coin. The folder itself is a little bit degraded. Uh, and they've all got the 1966 Navigator stamps on them there. Now, I've seen some 99 Co. proof coins in PNC form before, but I've never seen uh, one from the Hutt commemoratives that had the 1972 proof set in it. So that's a really interesting thing that I'd never seen before. And it just goes to show you that uh, of all the things in here, sometimes it is the slightly more... Uh, mundane things that get me interested because we don't see them very often so I've got a few more people here that have joined in Frank says is one of them should I clean my coins so today's topic of the day is questions that I'm sick of answering uh, simply because I got a phone call first thing this morning about a question that we get asked all the time and I thought okay let's talk about that no Frank cleaning coins isn't one of them I don't know how I forgot that I actually ran out of space in the slide so uh, hello Greg Darren Mike Ray Glenn, Carolyn, Andrew, Adam, Powell, Doug, Matt, uh, Brandon is asking, would you say that gold is in for a correction later this year? More affordable boomer rocks may be in the crystal ball. Don't know, don't make predictions about gold prices or silver prices or coin prices or anything like that, much to one gentleman's chagrin last week when he got a bit cranky with me because I refused to offer an opinion on future value of things. Uh, hello Tanya, how are you? Thank you for joining in. Right, let's jump into the news here. So uh, thank you very much to The Mint for emailing us at the end of the week before last, telling us there were no releases for May and I said that that on Monday in the video and then they made me look like a complete idiot on Tuesday by emailing everyone and telling everyone what the releases in May were. So it turns out that on the RAM dealer side of things, and we are of course an authorised Royal Australian Mint dealer, there are no releases in May, but 
inconveniently the retail arm of the RAM is doing some releases in May. They are releasing a one ounce coloured uh, Australian Antarctic Territory Emperor Penguin coin and similar to the 50 cent coins from last week uh, from last month which we still don't have they are being released in conjunction with a company in Perth we are having to deal directly with that company in Perth and seeing if we're going to get any of those one ounce coins uh, in the meantime they are only available from the uh, the Mint's website and via the retail shop I imagine the other release that we are also not getting is this year's loot bag it's uh, Creatures of the Deep loot bag supposedly it has a 2023 circulating coin set in it supposedly it's $25 we are not getting them they are not available to us they're only available uh, via the Mint's website and their retail shop I guess the only interesting thing about them is what is the 2023 uncirculated set that's in that bag, what portrait is on them, and so on and so forth. Because, of course, we are in a transitional phase right now where we don't know if we're going to have Charles's portraits or the Queen's portrait on things. So that will be interesting to see. Just a... Uh, Sandy is asking what a loot bag is. Uh, so for the last several years, Sandy, the mint... Has released what they're calling a loot bag which is some sort of a bag like a cloth bag with a set of circulating coins uh, and usually a little medallion and then some sort of toy or puzzle or something like that uh, so they did it with the RAF centenary they did it with the uh, the bush rangers coins uh, and I can't remember the others but there has been a few of them and they are a mint only product not available via the wholesale network so we will not be getting them just before we go to the next item, there was a question here from someone. Darren, I have two mint silver proof 2023. Would it be a good idea to grade one of them? Darren, depends on what your aim for your collection is. If you collect graded coins, by all means, get one graded. If you uh, want to get it graded, expecting it to make you money, then you need to understand whether your one is a good one or a bad one in comparison to all the other silver $2 coins. Uh, so until you've looked at a lot of them uh, you won't know that so it's up to you mate dinosaur egg thank you Tanya that was another loot bag the dinosaur egg thank you for that Tanya much appreciated right Adelaide Coin Expo was announced last week uh, Catherine and I are members of the Numismatic Society of South Australia we're sort of involved in a small way in the organization of the coin expo uh, we do most of the online advertising and various other things for them so it has been announced uh, it's going to happen this year uh, the s first full weekend in october and i'll just pop up a slide here for you there it is there as usual it's at the torrens parade grounds which is very close to the cbd in adelaide free entry free parking it's available it's going to be open on october 7th and 8th which is a saturday and sunday first indications are that there will be more dealers at this expo than at the last one uh, there's going to be i understand a limit on the number of tables that dealers can have so that they allow more dealers in last show went off like a frog in a sock i doubt whether this year's will be as busy but it will still be uh, pretty frenetic no doubt and you know october 7th and 8th isn't that far away if you are thinking about coming over here, then I would look at booking some accommodation and some flights. Everyone is welcome. It is a good show, and it would be great to catch up with uh, people who watch these videos and so on and so forth. Now, we don't know any more about what's happening at the show, about special releases. Uh, I'll head off the question about the Mint attending. We don't know, so don't ask. We don't know. As soon as we know whether the Mint is attending or not, we'll let you know. Uh, I wouldn't count on it uh, but we'll see what happens so that's the expo october 7th and 8th in, of october here in the middle of adelaide free entry free parking uh, please do come down and take part peter says are security arrangements different to last year don't know peter um, there was a theft at the show last year and i'm not sure if the organizers are going to address that or not just go back to the news here right so there were two 
coin stories that came up in the news. Uh, what opening time, Tanya is asking? 10 to 5 on Saturday and 10 to 4 on Sunday, Tanya. That's the hours that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, those hours did change a few times during the year last year in the organisation phase, so they may flex a bit between now and then. Once I know, I'll pop it up on our Facebook page and I run the Expo Facebook page too. I'll pop the information up over there once it firms up. Two coin articles in the news this week. Thank you to a couple of people who referred me to the one about the Viking coins. So uh, there were several hundred pieces of Viking silver found in a field uh, in Denmark, only a few miles away from a very well-known Viking fort. Now what the first thing that's interesting about this is that the person that found the silver was a, a young girl, a 12 or a 13 year old girl, and her first outing with a metal detector. And uh, she found them uh, 300 pieces of silver, of which 50 were whole coins. What is really interesting to us is that some of the coins were struck under King Harold Bluetooth, and yes, that's uh, the King Harold Bluetooth that the Bluetooth network protocol was named after, and they were a very scarce type, a uniface uh, cross type coin that was struck once uh, the Vikings had uh, become Christians. There were also uh, coins from the Middle East found, coins from Germany, and also there was broken uh, silver jewellery from Scotland and Ireland found, which probably came from a, a Viking raid. And those of you who watched Vikings, the Vikings miniseries would know that that is called hack silver. Uh, it's broken up jewellery that is stolen on raids. It's cut into pieces to make it easier to uh, transport. So fabulous first find for a young lady there with a new metal detector. Uh, I'm sure if I got a metal detector and went out in my backyard, I'd probably find the hot water pipe. So, uh, yeah, what a wonderful thing to find there. The other item in the news this week was a hoard of Roman coins that were found in a forest in France in 2021. 176 silver denarii, and a denarii is a, about a 3.5 gram silver coin uh, that was circulating pretty heavily in Rome from uh, perhaps about 400 a BC until about 300 AD uh, when the, the empire basically fell. Now what's really interesting about this is the number of them, 175 were found in a single hole and they all date from 157 BC to 80 BC and interestingly 80 BC is just before a, a major uh, Republican Civil War, uh, where the General Lucius Sulla basically overthrew uh, the Republic. And it's postulated that perhaps the the hoard was buried by a soldier who died in battle and never came back to it. Or alternatively, that a merchant buried it uh, in the times of strife and also never came back to it. So that did happen back then. There were no banks that could be trusted, of course, so you would take your your money off and buried in a hole and hopefully you would come back to it. Now it's really interesting that 176 denarii is actually a year and a half uh, wages for a Roman soldier, a legionary, so it seems unlikely that a, uh, a soldier would be carrying around a year and a half's pay, so I do like the idea that it was a merchant that had buried these things uh, and you can see all the coins there. They were found in a clay pot, you see them on the left there, and there they all are uh, laid out in bags on the right hand side there as they're being attributed and identified. So again, it would be great to find these things as opposed to uh, the copper hot water pipe in your backyard. Now, topic of the week is questions that we get asked here a lot. I don't mean to denigrate people who ask these questions. Uh, if you are new to the coin game, then there are obvious questions that you will ask. Uh, I guess what does uh, get me down a little bit is that people really are just chasing chasing money with a lot of these questions. They, they find something, uh, perhaps a shorter bit of money, and uh, get onto 
their phones or whatever and do a quick search and look at the headline of the first article that comes up and go okay I've got one of those it's valuable there's very little actual reading that happens amongst a lot of people that ring us they just ring us with a headline that they've found and uh, as a consequence you know probably 80% of our phone calls are answering the same six or seven questions over and over and uh, you know I've had three phone calls this morning and two of them were the same questions uh, over and over not a bad thing it's good that people ring us it's good that people are looking at their coins but uh, you know 30 seconds spent actually reading the articles that they google up would tell them that a lot of the time what they're finding has no value uh, or it's damaged or whatever it is so let's just have a look at the questions now no prizes for guessing what the first question well what one of these questions is so number one there is the 1971 great britain new pence now this is this is the great the british version of the hh two dollar coin uh when britain decimalized in 1967 they called their pennies new pence because of course they they went from the old pound shillings and pence to a decimalized pounds and pence system uh to distinguish from the old pennies and the new pence they labeled the coins until 1983 as new pence then in 1983 they transitioned away from that they got rid of the new and it just became pence in 1983 they did accidentally mint some two penny coins with new pence instead of pence so they're genuine mules they are genuine mules that were struck in error but for some reason, uh, there are a lot of articles out there online, the same as the HH two dollar coin, saying that the 1971 two new pence is a valuable coin, uh, and the articles are wrong. They are just wrong. They could not be any more wrong. Uh, the 1971 two new pence has a mintage of over one and a half billion. That's one and a half billion, one and a half thousand million coins. Uh, it's not a rare coin and uh, the articles about them online are wrong they are nothing more than wrong so your 1971 two new pence is not worth anything regardless of what internet article you've read or how many ebay listings you see where people are trying to sell them for two or three or four or five hundred pounds the next one is uh, of course a favorite of ours and anyone watching today would probably know about it if you're uh, you've been in and around coin collecting for a while you would know that the hh two dollar coin is a running joke in the coin collecting community because some i'm not going to insult them but some journalist of uh questionable ethics chose to write an article about some twit on eBay who was trying to auction 1988 two dollar coins for thousands of dollars. Now the article went along the lines of uh, this person is trying to auction them for thousands of dollars and then they sort of half asked uh, an expert about whether they were rare or not and then right at the very end of the article sort of in the last sentence they said that oh but by the way none of them have sold and none of them had bids on them so the whole thing was the whole article was clickbait it was just clickbait rubbish and unfortunately it was picked up by some other channels and i would say that probably between five and twenty times a week we answer phone calls or uh inquiries over the counter about 1988 and 89 $2 coins that have HH on them. If you don't know, HH stands for Horst Hahn. He's the gentleman who sculpted the reverse of the $2 coin with the indigenous gentleman on it. Uh, his initials were taken off of the coin after, 1980, after 1989. You're wondering how many they made, uh, 88 and 89 together, about 200 million. 200 million they are not worth more than two dollars they will never be worth more than two dollars next one when we get the phone call hi do you buy rare coins now i'll give you the tip right now if you know enough to know that a coin is rare you will never call it rare you would never ring up a coin shop and say i've got a rare coin i want to sell because uh, you would know that rare is the most overused term in numismatics uh, and I, I don't think I've ever had a phone call or inquiry over the counter where someone has said, oh, I've got rare coins that I want to sell, and they've actually had any rare coins. Uh, 
really there are almost no rare coins that you can find in change. There are some varieties. Uh, there are a couple of errors that you might be able to find, uh, but if you think you have rare coins in change, you almost certainly don't. Uh, we don't buy pocket change. We don't buy commemorative 50 cent pieces. We don't buy commemorative dollar coins. Uh, we don't buy most coloured two dollar coins. Uh, th there really is almost nothing you can find in change that is worth more than face value, unless it's an error or a variety. Now, if you are into errors or varieties, then you need to understand that not all Millennium 50 cent pieces are in Qs. Not all year 2000 dollar coins are mules. Not all coins with a double rim are mules. Uh, not all 1966 20 cent pieces are the wavy baseline variety. Uh, you need to educate yourself about uh, what it is that you're looking at. So that means if you find a 1966 20 cent piece in your change and you think, well, maybe that's an old coin. I mean, that's what, 50, 58 years old, or 57 years old, which doesn't seem like that old to me, but that's an old coin. So I'll Google that and uh, some numpty has written an article saying that 1966 coins are valuable and in the last paragraph they actually say that it's the wavy baseline just purely again as clickbait uh, do read the whole article and make sure that you understand what they're saying that it's not every 1966 20 cent piece so you know there are no rare coins really that you can find in change unless you're dead lucky uh, you know, to give you an example of how hard people have to look, uh, we have a gentleman that comes in here and he's a member of the Numismatic Society of South Australia as well. He's found four alien five cent pieces, decimal change over five cent pieces, four of them in the last two years. And you think, wow, that's amazing. He is so lucky. Until you find out that he noodles $200 worth of five cent pieces a day. $200 worth of five cent pieces a day. That's what he noodles, and in two years, he's found four. So, you know, your chances of finding an alien just in a random five-cent piece that passes through your hands are almost zero. So if you do find a 2016 decimal change over five-cent piece, and you Google it, and you find some article that says, oh, yeah, they're all valuable, they aren't. It's just that one particular variety. Next one, rare foreign coins might come as a surprise to some people but overseas they use coins exactly the same way that we do and just because you have a handful of change that someone has given to you after they've been on holidays to Europe or America doesn't mean that those coins are any more rare than the handful of Australian coins that you've got and I can't tell you the number of people that bring in euros and American quarters and American cents and telling us that they're rare and, you know, the trouble with that is, is that again, you know, Australian uh, article writers are not, don't have a mortgage on writing clickbait articles. The same thing goes on in the UK and Europe and America as it does here. So if you do happen to find your 1976 bicentennial American quarter and you Google it up and you read an article that says that they're super valuable, they're not. They're not at all. They are just pocket change, the same as a 1966 20 cent piece. So again, uh, if someone rings up and says, oh, I've got some rare two euro coins, then they don't. Uh, they've picked up on a keyword off of an article somewhere and decided that uh, they've got a rare coin and they don't, and they don't. Next one, American coins. If you've uh, been a coin collector for a little while, you would know that Australian coins are struck in what's called metal orientation. And that means that the head and the tail side of the coin are the same way up. If you were to stick a coin, I don't have a coin. You would never believe it in a coin shop. I don't have a coin in my hands. Um, if you put a coin in between your fingers with the head side uh, the right way up and you spin the coin around, then the tail side will be the same way up. Uh, that is called metal orientation. US coins are struck with what's called coin orientation. That means that when you put the coin in between your fingers like that with the head side the right way up and spin it around, the tails will be upside down. All American coins are like that. They are not errors. I wouldn't like to think of the number of people that have rung us up that uh, think they found an error on an American coin because the head and the tail side are a different way up, which is different to Australian coins, which of course are the same way up. They are not errors. 
And that happens on many different coinages around the world. And not everyone strikes the coins the same way as Australia does. Just because you find a foreign coin that the head and the tails are a different way up, it doesn't mean it's an error. Uh, how can you find out? Jump onto an online coin catalogue like Numista, and they will actually tell you whether the coin is struck in metal or coin orientation. Next one, glue on coins, and this this is a this is a fresh one for me because we had a gentleman in last week who had a a glued together coin and. Uh, refused to accept the fact that they weren't glued together, that it wasn't a glued together coin. Now, why do people glue coins together? Unknown, unknown, but I suspect it's to, uh, I suspect it's to try to pass the coins off as a higher denomination coin. So, for example, to glue two five cent pieces together and try to pass them off as a two dollar coin in a vending machine. That's the only thing that Catherine and I have ever really been able to to think of. So you know, I would say probably at least five times a month we get someone bringing a coin in here that has glue residue on it, and they are convinced that they have a a brockage or a double strike or some sort of error. And just there you can see some examples of glued together coins that we've been shown in the last few months. So we've got a 10 cent piece on the left there. It's got sort of an incuse uh, impression of the tail side of the 10 cent piece. And uh, the residue that that impression is in is clear. It's probably super glue. And why has someone glued a two 10 cent pieces together? I honestly have no idea why they have done it. Um, the trouble with super glue is, is it doesn't come off very easily with uh, any sort of solvent. So acetone doesn't get it off very easily. And, you know, people do tell us, oh, no, it's definitely on the surface of the coin. It's definitely part of the metal. It won't come off. I've tried to pick it off or whatever it is and it doesn't come off. And uh, Catherine and I are here to tell you right now and tell you that your coin's been glued to another coin and that's all there is to it. We There is no way on earth that this can come about of, from the coin manufacturing process. And uh, if you do find a coin that has some clear garbage stuck to it or the impression of another coin, then it has been glued together, with glued to another coin. It is not an error. It will never be an error. We see them several times a month, and we know what we're talking about. Right, the other one that we see a lot of, and this was another one that's near and dear to my heart, because I had a, uh, let's, let's just say, uh, when someone comes in here that has a strongly held opinion that uh, they won't be swayed on, then I tend not to get involved in a discussion with them because I don't really think it uh, it does them any good to be argued with and it doesn't look good for us to be arguing with people. You know, I'm quite happy to uh, be silent on things when people are do have strongly held beliefs. I'll state my point and then, uh, then we'll just let it go. And we did have a gentleman in last week, a very elderly gentleman, who has been collecting coins for a lot longer than I've been alive, and he was convinced that his five cent piece uh, was struck on an underweight planchet. And if you have been a member of our Facebook page for a while, you would know that we get a lot of coins through that are struck on real underweight planchets, and we get a lot of acid-treated coins. And here you can see two different acid-treated coins. There's a, a 50 cent piece up the top there that we actually got in change and a 10 cent piece down the bottom. Now they are quite obvious when you know what to look for. The lettering becomes very spidery. Uh, the rims often fade out first. But what is most interesting about them is that they do tend to erode away quite uniformly across the whole surface. And they do end up with quite an unusual granular texture on the coins. And once you've seen a lot of them, you you just you can pick them straight away. They are quite different to coins that are struck on underweight blanks. Coins that are struck on underweight blanks often have areas that are very well struck, and then they transition gently into areas that are less well struck. You have evidence of metal flow, 
coins that are treated in acid do not have those characteristics. So, you know, how do you know if it's been an acid? You've got to show it to someone who knows what they're talking about. So, you know, show it to us, uh, get onto one of the error groups on Facebook, show it up there, and, you know, uh, for all, don't don't get defensive about these things. If you don't know about coins and, uh, and you don't understand how coins are made, you don't understand what makes a genuine error, then uh, don't argue with these people because you know they know a lot of them know what they're talking about from peter andrews for example he's, who's here is watching the video today he knows what he's talking about and i can't tell you the number of times that i've seen people argue with him on facebook and they don't know who they're arguing with um you know we've had people in here that uh, get upset with catherine when she tells them that their coin is damaged and you know charge out of the store and they don't know who they're arguing with they're arguing with one of australia's leading error coin experts so, you know, if you do find something that looks a bit different, then by all means show it to people, but be quiet and listen to the opinions of people who know what they're talking about. And acid coins is a classic example of that. Now, I will just have a look at some comments here, because the last one here is just talking about uh, damaged coins. So San, Sandy says, Sandra says that maybe people glue coins together so it's a double header. That's a great, a great, uh, a great thought, Sandy. And uh, I actually have, um, I can't find it at the moment. I have a double headed English penny that someone has joined together with lead solder here. And I've been looking for it this morning to try and show it to you. And there's a, there's a two five cent pieces glued together with super glue here as well. So uh, yeah, to win a two up could be a, great way of uh, a great reason why people have um uh stuck the two coins together and cam says the same thing peter says coin glue i've been threatened online by people when i've told them that their coin error is not an error so peter you know uh i've i've had the same uh, i generally don't offer people an opinion online anymore mm -hmm. about their error i will if i'm asked directly and uh, generally that is the only comment that i'll ever make is just whether it whether what i think it is i don't respond to anything after that and i try to do the same thing here in the shop because as i said uh, getting into arguments with people isn't healthy for anyone i don't think uh, Brandon says should just tell people to get their supposed errors graded. Some folks have to learn the hard way. Yeah, but the trouble with that, Brandon, is that they get it back from PCGS and then they just say that PCGS is wrong. Some people will not be told. Some people will not be told. Several times a month, Adam. Yes, we see glued coins several times a month. We see acid-treated coins several times a month. Uh, Peter says that a, uh, a late author for the Australian coin and banknote magazine fell for the glue error years ago and unfortunately publicized them as genuine look uh, that author is a lovely man and he wrote the error coin and variety book that you can still buy from Renix. but a lot of the stuff in that book was not errors and it's disappointing that it got printed it, it's just disappointing it's got printed Andrew says your job is stressful no it's not it probably was for the first few months Andrew but as time goes by uh, we because we do get asked the same question a lot, we do have a bit of a script that we follow that try we try to help people and give them the information that they need to be able to understand what is a real error and what isn't. Uh, we generally know what upsets people and what doesn't, so we are very careful about what we say, and if we follow our little scripts that we have here, then generally most people are quite reasonable and uh, if they do get heated with us, then as I said, we do uh, just stop arguing. We don't argue with people because there's no point. Um, you know, if, if people's minds won't be changed, then uh, we we just we just stay away from it. We don't want people getting upset in here. And Catherine and I want to have a good time in here. We want to have fun, uh, and that means that we don't want to be upset, and we don't want to upset others. It's it's not a stressful job at all. It's it's great fun. It is great fun. Uh, it's a lot more sorting things out than what you'd think. 90% uh, of my day is sorting things from one bucket to another bucket. So, And Adam says, any job dealing with people in general can be stressful. Yeah, it can be for some people. Uh, I've been dealing with people face-to-face -face for many years now, and I do find it very enjoyable. Uh, it did, very rarely does it get... Um, really, very rarely does it get upset. Uh, do I get upset about people in here? Um, 
let's just have a look at some other things here. Sorry if I keep saying um. Uh, Adam says, I don't understand why people ask for an opinion of others and then disregard what the opinion is. Uh, Ad Adam, that's because people, unfortunately, there are people who just want to be right all the time and they they make a uh, an incorrect conclusion and then when they ask for advice, all they want to be told is that they're right. And especially if they've decided that something is valuable and perhaps in their own minds they've pre-spent the money on something or they've told something, someone that is uh, valuable and they don't want to look uh, like uh, fools. So yeah, it is unfortunate, but it does happen. Patrick says, I have thousands of coins with a few that I have questions about. Would it be better to book a time? Patrick, you can come in whenever you like. Uh, Saturday is always best for that sort of stuff, Patrick. We're always happy to look at coins with people. Antonia says, which one is better to keep coins in, two by twos or capsules? I prefer two by twos, uh, but if you want to use capsules, use capsules. Uh, some Facebook administrators are now taking action against decanters of group experts about time. I guess that means that they're um, people that are having a go at group experts here. Yeah, I think that's probably a good thing. Uh, Catherine says, a script. No, we don't have a written script, but... Catherine is definitely picking things up because I've heard my words come out of her mouth on the phone uh, because uh, I do tend to follow the same path with most conversations on the phone and have the same answers to questions on the phone and I have definitely heard my words come out of Catherine's mouth when she answers the phone. Um, I'll leave that one alone. Peter, thank you, Mikey. Much appreciated. How often do you update your website? I'm always keen on looking at new coins and banknotes that you get in. That's Nelson. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, generally, Nelson is when most of the stuff goes up. And then, uh, you know, we, we try to get up between 20 and 40 items a week on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then if you watch on other days, there might be the odd item that goes up on uh, the days that the shop's actually open. Uh, so, for example, last week we listed a bunch of coins on... Tuesday and then on Thursday and Friday uh, we listed up some mint product and some coin rolls. Uh, we listed up uh, some pre-decimal coins this morning. There will be some more pre-decimal coins going up once I've finished my lunch. And if I get my act in order there may be some more stuff going up tomorrow during the public holiday but we shall see. But generally Mondays and Tuesdays is the day that we put stuff up on our website. And Sandra says, yes, your website always says everything is solved. Now, Sandra, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, we have had a few terse comments from people complaining that uh, things sell too quickly, and I really don't know what to say. Uh, for us, it's a great thing because it means lots of people looking at our website. It is also a struggle for people who perhaps see things that they don't uh get a chance to buy but there's not really a lot I can do about it. Uh, quality coins with good photos sell quickly and we always try to price things fairly and I guess uh, we're victims of our own popularity sometimes and how quickly things sell. We are putting a few measures in place to uh, allow people who do pick up in store to view stock before it goes up on the website so that hopefully uh, when stuff does go up on the website, it does go to people uh, who need it mailed to them rather than people who just come into the shop to pick it up. I do apologize. Well, I don't apologize for it. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, Andrew says, do you know when the 50 cent penguin coin and whale coin will arrive? Soon. It's in transit. That's all we know, Andrew. It's in transit. Sandra says, uh, not complaining. It just means I have to annoy you to see if you have... Uh, multiples. Uh, yeah, that's... If they're sort of individual coins, then the chances are that we don't have multiples. If they're high-value things, the chances are we don't have multiples. If they're mint sets and proof sets, we could have multiples. So that's just a, a matter of shooting us a question. Uh, hello, Bevan, and thank you, Adam, for your comments on our website. Uh, if you can't find something, you might need to expand your search beyond one retail. Yeah, that's right, Sam. Thank you for sharing that. There are other coin dealers out there. Uh, I guess Sandra is a local here in Adelaide, so she's interested in picking things up from here in the shop and not having to pay postage. So that's what Sandra was asking. She doesn't get in here as often as she'd like, I'm sure. Right. It's 12.39. 40 minutes. What's going on? Thank you, everyone. <laughs>
thank you for the comments and if I did get a bit uh, cranky in those questions talking about the questions that I don't like answering then I do apologize if anyone takes offense again I do apologize always happy to talk about coins with anyone that comes in here uh, please do come in here with an open mind though I don't want to argue with you uh, I'm not right about everything but there are a lot of things that we get answered we get asked a lot and we do know the answers to them and we're not interested in debating those things with people uh, and that's that all right everyone that'll do for today thank you everyone for taking part uh, thank you Michelle thanks Gary oh Gary hello mate how are you uh, thanks Adam thanks Mike it's uh, it's been a pleasure as always uh, everyone stay safe take care happy collecting and uh, bye for now